When I was a child, in second grade, I met a missionary who came to tell us about her experiences in Japan. And at that time, the impact of her words lasted a lifetime. She told me that little children in Japan would not have heard about Jesus if she hadn't have gone. And right there, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Japan myself. 21 years later, God reconfirmed that call when he opened the doors for me to go to Japan. For the next 27 years, I struggled to learn Japanese. I taught English. I had the chance to mentor young women, and I work with local churches. In 2009, I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. I wondered why God didn't wait until I retired to give me this, but it just looked like a very tall mountain. I returned to the U.S. to begin chemotherapy, and then realizing that this was going to be a much more major thing than I had thought, I had to go back to Japan to pack everything up. And at that point, I was extremely uh, worried and uh, concerned about what my future might be. It was like this big mountain looming up in front of me. I was finishing up my radiation therapy and I began to feel a kind of urgency from God to return to Japan. I wasn't physically strong yet, but this was uh, something that I was getting very excited about. I suppose on the one hand, I could have retired right there. But on the other hand, when you're experiencing that urgency, which is, to me, a second call, I started planning the ideal work that I'd like to do However, those plans all fell through, and I returned to Japan not knowing what I was going to be doing. March 11, 2011, I was talking on the telephone with a friend in Northeast Japan, and all of a sudden, everything started to shake, and we mutually agreed that we better hang up real quick. Within the next uh, 20 minutes or so, there was a number of earthquakes. The televisions were on at that time, and we heard that it was up in the north and a very severe uh, situation. And I was extremely concerned about what was happening with my friends uh, in the northeast area that I, uh, where I worked for so many years. The next month was almost uh, like a one big blur because I was pretty well uh, incapacitated with back pain and glued to the TV, trying to get as much information as I can about the disaster up north and relating that information to uh, international ministries. But my back started to get <clears throat> better, and um, I got a phone call at that time from a, pa a pastor's wife up at north, and she said, I think now I have something that, that you can do to help us out here. And I said, oh, what is it? What is it? And she said, you just need to come up and just hug these people and tell them that you love them, and then you can go back. And I think that would be just a huge um, help, help to them, even though it's just a little bit. And so from that time on, after I did go up, and um, I was able to just do that. I met all the people in the former uh, church that I worked in and just brought up some snacky things for them, and but got a, an idea of what kinds of things that they really were going to be in need of. This was um, sort of the beginning of what how I felt, uh, how um, God was uh, showing me what maybe this next call was. As I began relating 
uh, to people in the north, as well as people in Yokohama who are hurting because of what was going on in the northeast. Um, I just felt like I was able to gradually flow into conversations and um, it came so naturally. And when I stopped to think about this natural transition I was able to make with these people, natural communication, um, I just felt like God was using what he had taught me during my illness and it was helping to helping me to relate uh, to the people who were hurting, who had experienced loss, who didn't know what their future was going to be. Uh, that was exactly where I was. Um, just the previous year, it just seems like the reinforcement of my weaknesses being made strong by the Lord. And um, I found that out in many aspects of my work and not just in relating to people in the disaster area, but uh, God just has provided the undergirding that I need and the strengthening that I need in spite of uh, the weaknesses. The work in the ministry that I did uh, relating to the disasters, the three disasters, um, acted sort of as a jump start for entering into the work that God had called me to do. After those first two or three months, ministry opportunities just kept coming one after another and to the point where I had reached my limit, so to speak, and how much I had on my plate. But I think God used the, um, the time of waiting on Him after I first got back to Japan and then uh, being catapulted, so to speak, into the tsunami um, relief effort and that all just sort of acted as a um, impetus uh, for me to dive in to the new opportunities. And I think that uh, uh, these all have their origin in the call that I felt, first of all, getting back to Japan and then um, experiencing this call then in a specific way relating to the uh, tsunami effort. Often we have to have our whole life mapped out before us, but in this experience, God has clearly showed me that waiting on Him is really important and that He needs to have all the different aspects of um, His plan together, put together before he can lead us directly into uh, his work and what his call is. I'm so thankful for all the support I've had, especially in these last several years. And I just could not have gone through the, um, the trials of illness and tsunami and un the uncertainties without the, the support and the prayers of so many people. It just seems like this is a long journey that I'm on and I've come this far with the support of these people, but with the undergirdings of God and the direction of God. And I feel very strongly that God will continue to lead me into the future, even though I don't know exactly uh, what it holds for me, but I feel like that he is 
my pilot, 